Hi guys, Professor Latimer here. I'm the CC mom who loves science and today I want to bring you CC Cycle 2 Week 16 Hands-On Science Experiments and those are going to be numbers 189 and 190 in your Van Cleves guide which are on page 104. So we'll be doing these two today. And so I'm going to go over number 190 first, Breakthrough. And I'd like to have Nicoleum's uh, science scripts to, to kind of help guide me through the process. And they, she has some really good talking points, so I recommend those. Um, just take a look at them, just to give you some ideas for some questions to ask, or just some good information to share with your students. So for breakthrough, you're going to need two sheets of paper. Now, depending on if you want to do this as a tutor demonstration or um, and just have, you know, one set of circles or have circles for each student. Um, and if you have older students and you want them to, you know, trace and cut out the circles themselves, so you can kind of do this different ways or you can have all these uh, prepped ahead of time if you have younger students. Um, but you'll need two pieces of paper cut in 8-inch diameter circles. And one of them I made a cut... Um, to the center and we're going to make that into a cone. So our question is, or we're going to demonstrate how the shape of an object affects its falling speed. So these two pieces of paper, they're the same diameter, but we're going to change the shape of one of them. So the shape, this one that has the slit, you're going to fold it into a cone shape. And you're just going to take a piece of tape, you could use scotch tape or masking tape to keep it closed. Like that. And then to make sure that our circles are going to weigh the same, you're going to take a piece of tape that's about the same size and put it about in the middle of your flat circle. So we have two pieces of paper that weigh the same. So your question will be, are these, if we drop these from the same height, are they going to fall at the same speed? And what the, see what their hypotheses are. And what's cool, if you can show it in class, or this might be something good for parents to show at home, there's actually a, a video of a, an experiment that astronauts did on the moon where they held a hammer and a feather and they dropped them from the same height at the same time and they actually fell to the ground at the same time which is really interesting because a feather and a hammer they don't weigh the same but they drop to the earth at the same time and so uh, what we're going to talk about is the effect of gravity and you can ask them about what do we already know about gravity we've done a couple experiments already about gravity and how it keeps planets in their orbit around the sun so um, Gravity is a force that pulls something to its center. So the Earth has gravity and um, it pulls us to the center of the Earth. It's also going to pull these objects. So you're going to test. You're going to hold these up about the same height as their hypothesis and drop them at the same time. And you'll notice that the one that's shaped like a cone, if you have it pointing uh, point down, this one falls a lot faster than the flat one. And why is that? So gravity pulls equally on objects if they're dropped from the same height. So these are from the same height. So gravity, the force of gravity is pulling the exact same on them, but they're falling at different rates. And why is that? And that is because we have air around us and that air is made up of molecules. And the molecules are pushing against the pushing up on the paper. So as we drop it, the force is pulling it down, but the air molecules are pushing up. And because this circle has a lot more surface area, there's a big area that the molecules are pushing up on, versus the cone, it kind of just has this point that it touches first. And then because of its shape, the air molecules are kind of pushed around it easily 
so it, it moves through the air. It kind of slices through those air molecules a lot better than just a flat circle like this. And you can have them think up, okay, have you ever been swimming and have you ever dived into the into the pool and you know what shape was your body did you put your hands over your head like this and kind of make your body nice and straight or did you ever do a belly flop on the water where you just kind of went flat and didn't go very far into the water you kind of just smacked on top of the water and that's because you did the belly flop you were spread out you had a lot more surface area and that those water molecules pushed against more of you versus when you kind of dive in and kind of make yourself into like this pointed shape you just kind of slice right into the water and the water goes past you more easily and it's called an aerodynamic shape and so engineers they design cars and airplanes and spacecraft rockets to be um, aerodynamic like that if they want to move through the air easily so you'll notice um, like race cars have a certain shape or rockets have a certain shape that because um, they have to go through the air to get out into space so, um, there's a, re a, a benefit to designing something with a shape like this that easily pushes those air molecules out of the way if you want something to move quickly through the air so that's um, that is are some thoughts on this experiment you can have the students come up and try or if they have their you know their own set they can they can test it or they could come up and, and try um, the tutors uh, circles and see if they get the same results and if you don't get those results you know if any of these experiments don't turn out quite the way you think they will it's just a good opportunity to, to ask questions because sometimes they don't turn out the way you think that they will. And it's a good time to ask questions. Go, okay, why did that happen that way? What were the factors that affected it? Did I not drop them from the same height? Um, you know, was there a fan blowing um, that, you know, could have affected how it falls? Just things like that. Because that happens in as what real scientists do. Sometimes things don't turn out the way they expected. and But that's a really good opportunity to learn. So... Um, just don't get discouraged if, thing, if the experiment doesn't uh, turn out the, the way that it should or uh, you wait, the way you think it will. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go over number 189, which is shape up. So for this one, you'll need um, a table, a rectangular table, um, like one of those long rectangular ones. You'll need um, something to prop up one end of the table, either two books of the same size or we've used, you know, pieces of wood that are the same thickness. You just want to um, prop one side up of the legs so that you have a nice slope because um, we're going to be rolling some objects today and we're going to determine how shape affects speed. So this is number 189 um, in our guide. So for this one you'll need the table um, propped up and you'll need um, two jar lids, like those mason jar lids, and I don't have those today, but you'll tape those together so they make kind of a, uh, a double wide ring. And you'll need uh, a roll of tape and a marble and probably a helper. You can have one of the students help you or another parent help you. Um, but we're going to see, make a hypothesis, um, and I, well, we'll ask questions. Well, we learned in the last one that gravity pulls on things equally. And so if we roll um, several objects down the same table from the same height, are they going to go the same speed? Or is something going to change what happens? So you're going to go to the, the higher end of the table. You're going to hold your tape and your marble and your two jar lids that have been taped together. And you're going to ask the students, okay, which one do you think will get to the bottom the fastest? Which one will be the slowest? Or are they all going to go the same speed? And so you're going to let them all go. And what you should find is that the marble gets to the bottom first. And we'll ask, why is that? And you'll notice that the tape, the roll of tape, gets to the bottom slowest. 
And so um, gravity is pulling on all these objects at the same rate. The same force is pulling on them, but they all have to slide down. The rolling speed is different than the gravity. So an object has to do work to get itself rolling. It has to, that's what we call in the rolling speed. And it rolls itself around its center of gravity. And the Van Cleef's Guide has, has just a, a simple uh, definition for center of gravity is the point at which an object balances. And so you could see that like if you ever tried to balance a pencil on your finger, let's see if I can get this. So right there is where the center of gravity of this pencil is. It's not quite in the middle of the pencil but that's where it balances. And so something that is round or spherical, its center of gravity is right in the, in the very middle in its geometric center. Um, if you have something more irregular shaped like this, then your center of gravity is, is gonna be kind of more over here versus, you know, right in the middle of the object. So, um, and a piece of tape, you have a center of gravity as well and the, the jar lids. So when most of your mass is close to your center of gravity, your object has to do less work to get it to start rolling versus um, this tape or it has a lot of mass farther away from its center of gravity. So it's gonna take more energy for this to start getting rolling. So because the tape is using more of its energy to get itself rolling because we have more mass on the outside farther away. It's going to move slower than the marble because the marble can get rolling really quickly because all its mass is right there in at the center of gravity or pretty close. So it has to do spend less energy to get itself started and to get itself rolling. So that's, um, Let's see if there's anything else I want to say. Yeah, the closer the weight to the center of gravity, the less energy it takes to start it rolling. So that's a cool demonstration. You could have the students um, come up and see if they can get the same results. And if you don't get those results, kind of hypothesize, okay, why? Why Why did that happen? Um, I think we tried it before. We're using like... Um, like a can of something too, just to see if that, you know, made a difference. So you could try it with different things or just those three in the guide. But these are some fun ones and you can get the students involved in asking lots of good questions and learning more about gravity. So that is week 16 hands-on science experiment and I'll see you guys soon.